I'm Nicholas with Maple Power Systems. Here we're gonna go through an installation on a on a 2022 Intrepid 409 Valor. Uh, this boat has no generator, but it has 17,000 BTUs of air conditioning, uh, two lithium batteries for a total of 500 amp hours that will give this customer a minimum of five hours of runtime without engines running, without shore power, with the unit running at full speed. So if you come with me on the boat, we're gonna take a look at uh, right now what the temperature inside is and start the unit up and see how long it takes us to get the temperature down. So here we're going into the cabin. We're going to start the unit up. So we're down here in the cabin of the 409 Valor. Uh, it's 419. What we're gonna do is come here, look at the unit. It's 85 degrees in the boat. We're going to go ahead and turn the thermostat on. In this back corner of the, of the, of the aft cabin, we have the return vent. If we look a little bit further down, we have a three inch round vent. We have another three inch in the head, so I'll show you that one now. secondary vent right over here. The customer has it just cracked open because he doesn't want that much cooling in this area. And then we have the main vents on the port side of the vessel. With plenty of airflow coming through here. So there's no transition boxes. Um, it's just the ducting coming straight through this hole here and just pushing all the air throughout. Now we're gonna take a look at the outside components. So we're gonna go first, take a look at the through hole setup. So where the through hole is, um, where the unit is located, where the water pickup is, and then we'll come back and see how the, uh, how the, how the temperature inside is. Coming under this aft center hatch, Just to be able to show better, I'm just gonna climb in this hole. We have our through hole right over here, valve. So obviously in the open position. Here we have our strainer, our water pump. Here we have a bleeding system, a bleeding valve. In case air gets introduced into the system when you're cleaning the strainer, when the bowl comes out of the water. And then on top of that, we also added this this um, bronze check valve just to um, just to eliminate the issue of all the water escaping when the boat comes out of the water. That way the customer doesn't have to be purging the system. So another thing I wanted to show is gonna be the water discharge. When we turn the AC unit on, it's always good to confirm and periodically just take a look and make sure what the water flow is. So to check the water flow of the unit, you're gonna look over on the, on the starboard side of the vessel yeah, at the discharge, you can see the air conditioner discharge right down there below. And we also have a discharge just forward of it, which is for the condensation. The next thing we're gonna show as well is going to be the unit location. So you saw the return vent, and behind that return is where we have the unit. And we have the access to the unit over here. Um, so I'm gonna pick this hatch up where the starter seat is. So the maintenance or service to this system is pretty simple. All we're gonna have to do is remove seven screws. This whole panel just comes off. Unit's located right behind here. This display here is for the inverter. So we're using, this is a 115 volt unit, so we're running this unit through a master volt 2000 watt inverter. The next compartment that we're gonna be looking at is gonna be what I'm calling the electronics compartment. This is where we put the batteries in place, this is where we have the inverter, the DC to DC charger. So we're gonna go and look at this and explain a little bit about the function of each device in here. Our 
two 250 amp hour lithium batteries, so for a total of 500 amp hours. We have our Masterhold 2000 watt inverter with a 100 amp charger built in. Battery switch for the inverter. The boat's connected to shore power. There's no real reason to disconnect this. This switch is only for long-term storage, disconnected from power, or for service to the inverter. We have a Victron monitor, so we can view everything happening with the batteries, um, with the bank, what the consumption is, how much time we have left remaining, what the battery voltage is. We're also reading what the house voltage is through this second voltage sensing lead. We have two DC to DC chargers with their corresponding fuses, um, line fuses as well as the, uh, or I'm sorry, positive fuses as well as what we have on the, uh, they come with these, with fuses also on the negative side. So these are taking from the house battery that's being charged by the three outboard engines and is distributing the power once that bank is full to then our lithium batteries. So the idea is when the engines are running, we're gonna be maintaining the discharge of the AC unit, even when it's running at full speed. And that's the purpose of these two devices here. We're gonna go back out. What I'd like to show as well is some of the functionality of the Victron app. So I'm gonna get out of here, show you the Victron app. So here what I have pulled up is gonna be the Victron app. So I'm connected to the Bluetooth device that I showed you downstairs, so the Smart Shunt. This is the BMV 714. And so what we're looking at here, the important factors to look at, we're drawing 82 amps, 82.8. Um, we have four hours and 17, four hours and 18 minutes. It's still kind of figuring out its time remaining in here. And the unit's already been running, the customer already used it previously when he arrived here. Um, so we still have over four hours remaining of runtime, even though the customer's used it for about an hour and a half. And now we have it running, we've been running it. It's now 440, so it's been about another half an hour. Now what we're gonna do is go inside <clears throat> and we're gonna look at what the temperature of the temperature in the cabin is. Another feature I wanted to show or another aspect that I think is very important to show is the fact that here we have the two 30 amp services of this vessel and you can see that there is nothing connected in here. The engines are up in the air, they're not running. So we have no, nothing coming into these batteries. This is a completely standalone system. This is something that'll work. No generator running, nothing else involved. Um, we're not making up these numbers. This is really how the system works. So now looking at the time, it's 4.44. So it's been about half an hour since we started up the system. It's 76 in the boat. The set temperature is set to 76 degrees. You can see an orange there. The consumption over here, we're drawing 52 amps, 51, 52. And we're now maintaining this temperature in the, um, in the cabin. So then what we're gonna do is we're going to bring this temperature down. Because the important thing about this unit is that we're talking about a variable speed system. So it's a 17,000 BTU when running at full speed. Although as it reaches, as it's closer to its set temperature, it will slow itself down. So the compressor is almost always gonna be running and it's always gonna be drying the air, which is extremely important on a boat like this. You wanna make sure that you always maintain a very low humidity in the boat. The other comment's gonna be about the noise level. Noise level is very important, no vibrations. You don't hear any rattles, you don't hear any banging. The unit's very quiet, um, very little vibration. And it's a very comfortable experience because you don't have the constant bang of a compressor turning on and the bang of a compressor turning off. It's just a very fluid sound, so it's much easier to um, enjoy the air conditioning. So just to go over the display a little bit. So, that orange is gonna be our set temperature. That white's gonna be the ambient temperature in the boat, so we had gone up a little bit, and now it's gonna, so um, anyways. Mode, we're set to cooling. If I push this again, it's gonna set to fan mode, so that's gonna be fan only running, no compressor. And then if I tap it again, it's gonna to go to heat mode, it's gonna be a sun emblem, so I don't wanna change it now because then the unit's gonna shut off. Um, but 
all of our units do have reverse cycle heat, another important thing to mention. Fan, so you see this auto mode here. If I tap the fan button, so that's gonna be the first speed. And we have different adjustable settings up until five bars, but auto is always the best way to keep it. And if we go to the menu, it'll show us this information here. So I see compressor, there's a button that says on, pump is on as well. Heat, this is for electric heat, so it's a little bit counterintuitive. When you put the unit in heat mode, you will not see heat turn on. What you're gonna see is valve turn on because we're using a reversing valve. Um, so that is one thing I wanted to go over. You can see here that we're talking about, we have a return temperature of 77 degrees. The evaporator right now is at 47 degrees, 48, 47. So we're almost 30 degrees colder on the evaporator as we are, or 30 degrees colder on the evaporator as we are in the, in the vessel. And then another important temperature for customers to take a look at is gonna be this cooling water temperature. So this cooling water is gonna be your condenser, the pipe that the water is passing through. So right now we're at 104. So 104 is perfectly acceptable. It's quite hot um, right now. So it's, it's normal to have numbers like that. Once you see this number going above, um, 110, 112, uh, 115, it starts taking away from the efficiency of the system. So it's something to keep an eye on. Um, a high number there could signify the pump's not running. It could signify that you have a dirty strainer. It could signify that um, the units need to be scaling depending on the use of it. So it's just, it's an, another piece of information that's very important for customers to know about. And if you ever have any errors, any errors will be showing up on the display. We have this alarm button. So if there's an error on the system, compressor's not running, most likely you're gonna find this alarm button flashing. If you just push that button, it would tell you what the alarm is. Obviously we have no alarms, so we have a blank screen. Some of the common alarms that you're gonna see, you're gonna see possibly an error eight. It's gonna say high pressure next to it. High pressure signifies insufficient water flow, no water flow, so something needs to be checked out. And this is in cooling mode. Um, um, another error is error 10. Error 10 signifies that it's reading that that coil temperature, the condenser temperature is too hot. So once again, those two errors go hand in hand. There are other errors, just far less common. Um, we have an error five, for example. Error five is gonna be lost to refrigerant. It's fairly uncommon to come across something like that, but it can happen. Uh, we also have, um, It'll have a description next to each alarm and we have a description of the alarms as well in the manual um, that's available online through our website. Thank you for watching the video. That's the walkthrough of the Maybrew 17,000 BTU, a variable speed unit installed on an Intrepid Valor uh, 409. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, we hope to hear from you soon. Have a great day.